Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a quick look at Archman. So Archman, uh, the new versions of Archman came out uh, 1909. Um, and we're going to have a look at what this is, how the install installation goes and things like that. I've already installed it. I don't think we're going to walk through the installation just because it's, it's Calamaris with like no options. Uh, there are several other installs that we've done. I did have to wipe the disk as I often do on a Calamaris install. There's something where even if you say erase the disk and install, it always fails out. And so if you're installing anything with Calamaris installer um, and you plan on wiping the disk, go ahead and just wipe the disk with uh, just with your basic disk utilities or FDisk, whatever you're doing, wipe the disk first and then run the installer, then you won't have any problems. Of course, if you're partitioning it manually, you can always do that through the installer as well. So let's go ahead and uh, look at their website. So this is archman.org. This is a distro that comes out of Turkey. And the idea here is what they say is this is, this is basically raw arch just with their branding and version number. That's what they say it, it is. And looking at it briefly, I was able to very quickly install a few other desktop environments. As of right now, the last few releases, it seems to be limited to XFCE, which is okay because it's Arch. You can put anything on it. And I actually was focused on what can I do without going into the terminal, which is something that, um, something that you know the Arch elitists are going to completely hate me for. But for those of us that are not Arch elitists and we just want to use Arch because of the latest packages, it is a very good option. So uh, you can read a little bit about it. Um, the official version is available with XFCE. Of course, there's KDE Plasma, Mate, LXQT Desktop Management. I did not see at this time any downloads to get those on the box. So you had to go in and get your XFCE and then install whatever else you wanted into it. They do have Pomoc, they have Pac-Man, and they have one other um, package manager in there as well, and I forget which one it is. It is on their release notes. Uh, let's see if their release notes is actually on the blog, yeah. So here is just the information. Uh, Lake with Fish is the name of it, which comes with uh, I can't pronounce this um, uh, this name here, but it is called Lake with Fish, and that is the um, uh, the code name for this. So we see some basic information. It's a lightweight XFCE desktop, so TK Pacman is an alternative package manager. So you still have Pacman as well. You have Pomoc in there, and you have a variety of other uh, other options. XFCE is 4.14, of course, Firefox um, 69, GIMP 2.10. There's Inkscape, VirtualBox is at 6.10. And then there's a few other uh, a few other things that you can find in the release notes. As far as grabbing it, you can go on to the download page, which is going to come over here. Now, one of the things I really like about these guys is they're not like, hey, you got to use ours. They have links to theirs. They have links to the raw arch and they have links to the, to the Manjaro downloads. So they're just like, hey, let's get the information out. And I like that. So I'm clicking on their download page and it brings you to this list here. So here's just this whole archive of different version numbers that they have. And if you come on down into here, you'll see we have the XFCE download here. So we have the ISO, uh, package lists, we have the hashes. I had to go down a few versions down before I found where there's um, there's some community builds. So there's an enlightenment build, XFCE and Mate. So when you're downloading this, you're going to be downloading the XFCE version. And then with the XFCE version, then what I was able to do is without going into the terminal, install a few other desktop environments on top of it. So let's go ahead and uh, boot this guy up and have a quick look at what it looks like. I found the installation, of course, I had to clear out the disks, which is something I usually have to do with Calamaris. But once I did that, then everything ran very smoothly. So uh, here we are loading up the virtual machine. And I do use an older version of VirtualBox uh, that is on Linux Mint. Um, and I've not had any problems at all. It goes into full screen without any problem. Of course, it's probably not going to today because I've just said that, but you know how it goes. In all of my earlier testing today, I've had no problems with it going full screen. So you can see here, I installed um, Deepin and Plasma on it. Let's go ahead into their main, um, their main build, which is XFCE. 
This is the one that they're actually giving you out of the box. And of course, when you load this guy up, we have a panel at the bottom which auto hides. So you do have full screen real estate with that. It takes only 70% of the screen. So here we have hex chat, we have our desktop icons, we have Firefox installed. As far as applications, I can't show you exactly what is installed by default because I came in and I was installing a bunch of things. So there's a lot more on this that uh, that I installed in putting up de extra desktop environments. I did try and put Budgie and Pantheon without following Arch tutorials to do it. Those two failed, but I was able to get Plasma and Deepin, and those seemed to work flawlessly. So uh, let's see if we have, uh, let me see if we have uh, uh, a system resource manager on here. Is HTOP installed? All right, so HTOP is indeed installed. So we are running on 777 megabytes. Um, it's possible it could have run on a little bit less before I put in a bunch of other stuff to it. Um, we'll also see down here that it is telling us that we have some updates available. Just, hey, in the uh, name of Arch, because, yeah, I just went ahead and uh, installed everything just a couple of hours ago. So we're already getting more Arch updates. So GNOME online accounts, which probably came from attempting to put Budgie on the system. So could I put it on it without a problem? Absolutely. I just have to follow the tutorials on how to do that from uh, in, in Arch. But as far as going in and I was able to boot up Pamuk and um, do Pamuk here for installing software. So here's your add remove software. And to get the other desktops on here, I literally just came down to the Deepin group and installed everything under Deepin. I tried the Plasma group, installed everything under Plasma as well. And there's uh, Mate group, there's LXQT, LXDE. Um, there is a Pantheon group, although that did not get me the Pantheon desktop. There are a few other steps that I might need to do. And the other reason I'm pointing all this out is to say, I was trying to gauge how user-friendly is this particular distro. Because here's kind of where we get to, and we can talk about this more later at another time, where some people might need to run Arch, and of course your Arch elitists might say, oh, well, just go in and follow the guide. Well, you know what? Some of us are not computer hobbyists that are, it is our task to figure out how to get our system to run Arch. Our task is to get a computer system up and running so we can actually get back to our real work. So what I was trying to test is, does this distro allow us to do that? And the answer is yes. Without any real complications, I was able to get this guy up and running. I was able to load a desktop, which is very good and very functional. It's not the way I would set up the desktop personally, but you know what? That's okay. I'm not the only computer user in the world. So, uh, but it does accomplish its task of getting, getting everything set up. We have Archman Project, Archman Forum. I didn't see anything else weird or funky in here at all. Let's go ahead and uh, log out and we'll have a look at the other desktop environments I was able to put on here. So let's go ahead, jump on down to Plasma next. And of course with these, there's really no, uh, no specific customization that I was able to see, but just going into the Plasma group, installing everything under our Plasma group did give me KDE. No problem at all. So I was able to get in here and uh, we have just a traditional KDE build. Here's our basic notifications. We can go into here. Here's our system settings. Of course, we do have Discover on this. So here's our workspace themes. Basic look and feels. We are getting the notifications there. So, you know, there's um, pretty much everything that we need's on here. So it's, uh, it is looking pretty nice. Let's go ahead and go with our oxygen as well. I know uh, not everybody likes the skeuomorphic designs, but I actually do. Um, so, you know, we have, uh, we have Plasma working without a problem. No hitches here. We have everything working, and it does appear that we are set with our desktop icons, and it looks like we are double-clicking to open things up. All right, let's go ahead and jump on over to Deepin. Let's go ahead and log out. And then we will jump in and have a quick look at the Deepin desktop environment. Go up here to Deepin. Super secret passwords. It's definitely not one, two, three. And we do have this nice hummingbird here. And here is our Deepin desktop. 
and I think uh, I did not hear the audio, but I guess you guys probably did as it booted up. So here's our basic launcher view. So everything's working there. And of course we can condense this down to the list view as well. Clicking this guy right here will give us our list view instead. And of course we can right click on our panel here and we can go from our fashion to our efficiency mode and kind of turn this into like a Windows type view. So if that's something that you guys are unfamiliar with the deep and desktop, this is kind of like the Windowsy like view. And then of course we can go with uh, just right clicking, go back to our fashion mode. And now we're more like a Mac -y type view. Here's our system settings, a variety of different things. And you can adjust what's on this, this panel here or not. Right clicking, you can put your location in, you can put it on either of the uh, four sides of the monitor. We can go with our size, this is our medium. Our status, you can keep it shown, keep it hidden, you can smart hide it. And then the power button, here's our trash, our date and time button. So there's a variety of different things that you can put on or take off. So does this distribution accomplish its task? I absolutely think that it does accomplish the task. So with Archman Linux, what we are able to do is we are able to download the simple ISO, which is about 1.3 gig. We're able to just install it into our system, and now we will have an XFCE. The limitation is while it will work with a variety of desktop environments, you probably are going to need to follow some tutorials from Arch on how to get other desktop environments on here. That's not a real huge deal. Some of them I was able to, to install just by installing everything in the group. Um, just to let you know that. And uh, overall, though, it is, outside of that, it is just Arch with a different version number and branding. So you are getting exactly what you expect to be getting. You're getting a simple installer to install Arch to get your system up and running easily. That's my thoughts on Arch, man. So if you are needing to run Arch for whatever reason and you're not a guy that wants to flip through all of the manuals and things, this might be another one of these ways to get it up there. Of course, Manjaro, Arch Labs. I hear Arco Linux is is good with this as well, and Endeavor is becoming another one of these types of distros as well. So with that in mind, uh, let me know what you guys think about Archman in the comments down below.